used to be Florida's scariest invasive species, the Burmese python. I can't even look at it, but now it may be not them, but these guys. I'm talking about the killer Nile crocodile. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm sure you've all heard about the invasive pythons in Florida and how destructive they've been. But in today's video, we're gonna look at some invasive species which could be larger, more destructive and more dangerous to humans if they are actually there. Let's dive in. Three of them captured near Miami and researchers worry there could be more of them. They can grow up to 16 feet long, weigh 1,600 pounds and may have killed some 200 people in a year in Africa. Now researchers think they were brought here illegally and since they're not native, could be threatening our ecosystem, especially if they breed with American crocodiles, which are smaller, less aggressive, not known to kill people. There are Nile crocs at Disney's Animal Kingdom, but not at Tampa's Larry Park Zoo or the Florida Aquarium. Always have to love the sensationalistic tone of the news. One thing they said that is true, which I'll give them, is that yes, they do occasionally eat people. Nile crocodiles do just not eat people as like an accident or a mistaken identity as an alligator might, but they actually eat people sometimes because they feel like it. They've evolved somewhere where large mammals are a prey source. Man-eating crocodiles are slithering their way into the Florida swamps. Three Nile crocodiles have been captured near Miami, and wildlife experts say it's possible there are more out there. This type of croc is not native to South Florida, but it's believed that exotic animal collectors may have brought them to the area. The big concern, outside the fact that they can eat a person, what? are the risks they now pose to the ecosystem. Imagine that. If Nile crocodiles spread in Florida, you'll have to import some Aussies to deal with them. As we all know, Aussies are the only people that can handle large crocs. <laughs> but in all seriousness, overall, what would concern me would be the genetic dilution of the American crocodile. If they do crossbreed with American crocodiles, that really just ruins the whole conservation effort that's been made with that species. American crocodiles have been spreading quite steadily in South Florida, and they're doing quite well. They're a federally protected species. And it would be a shame if an invasive species let loose, managed to breed with them, and, and essentially kind of ruin the species, as it were. Have a shoot on site order for Nile crocodiles in the Everglades. Yeah, they're like Nile deer. Crocodiles. Yeah, There's too many. It, apparently, no. no, no, it's mostly Nile. alligators, but they've spotted African Nile crocodiles, the ones that eat zebras. Ah, uh, the ruined the neighborhood. neighborhood. The ones that eat people. Yeah, they the eat everything. Eat people. They eat everything. And they think there might be a breeding population in there the Everglades. Can't there can't Whoa. be. There can't be. There can't be. Wow. <laughs> I've heard a lot about this now, the idea that there is a breeding population of Nile crocodiles in the Everglades. There is no concrete evidence of this. There are lots of people who've said they've sighted them, but there's no concrete proof. No one's caught them. There's been a few babies that got away, literally, and were recovered. So I just don't, honestly, no offense to anyone, but I just don't believe it. I really don't think it's true. They think they could be breeding a population of green anacondas just outside of Naples. Take a look at how big these snakes are. Green anacondas are one of the largest snakes in the world. Females are larger than males. They can grow up to 30 feet long. That's about two to three times the size of Burmese pythons. The adult snakes are usually 10 to 16 feet. The green anacondas are native to South America. So why are they popping up in our area? Again, green anacondas, there has been rumors of them being in the Everglades for a long time now. Lots of people say it's true but I still can't find any concrete records of juveniles or specimens of various ages which would suggest breeding and a, an established population as it were. So this is actually 100% true. Green anacondas are starting to invade the Everglades as well. Now obviously it talks about it a lot, but there are Burmese pythons in the Everglades. There could be anywhere from 100,000 to a million of them in the Everglades, and they're just constantly reproducing and they're causing a lot of havoc. We have known that there have been anacondas spotted in the Everglades ever since the 2000s. But now sightings of them are increasing and scientists are trying to figure out what their impact is going to be and if it's going to be as big as the Burmese pythons has. And these snakes can get a lot heavier and a lot longer than regular Burmese pythons. Males usually grow up to 15 feet long, but females can grow up to 24 feet long. Anacondas are an apex predator in the wild where they live. But they're an equatorial species, they like it very, very swampy. And being equatorial, they like their temperatures very, very, very stable. The difference between them and Burmese pythons is that Burmese pythons in the wild have a more northerly range in some parts of their range and they show greater adaptability despite the fact that they also like swampy habitats. So the occasional cold snap, even down to central Florida, which does happen, a Burmese python will get over it. 
anacondas, I'm not sure that they will be able to breed, establish widespread populations and, and colonize the area like the pythons have, given that they really don't like any cold snaps at all. Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission and a number of our partners are out here today in Western Miami-Dade County looking for the Northern African Python. The Northern African Python is similar to the Burmese Python in that it's a large constrictor snake that is not native to Florida, uh, but unlike the Burmese Python, we believe that the species is contained in a much smaller area of about six square miles and the population seems to be smaller as we've only found a few over the past several years. So for that reason, we're out here trying to increase our efforts to hopefully eradicate the species from the wild in Florida. Now we're on to something that has been recorded. It is definite. There really are African rock pythons in the wild in Florida. They have established potentially a small population and there are records of hybrids. Even scarier. They could potentially mate with invasive Burmese pythons and produce a terrifying sci-fi hybrid. A man-eating super snake, unlike anything South Florida has ever seen. While a man-eating super snake may belong to the realm of science fiction in their native habitat, and now in Florida, when rock pythons strike, it's real and it's terrifying. Hybridization is an important topic in biology, but you can't just give out these kind of quick bits of info on it and sum it all up. I'm sure when you watch videos like this, you might expect me to say, well, that's it, they're gonna hybridize, this is what's gonna happen next, they'll spread here, here, here. And that's kind of what the news does with us. They say, you know, they're gonna spread throughout and they could be a super snake. And I, I've seen these stories a few times. The reality is that no one can predict how hybridization is going to go, especially in an environment which is an invasive environment. So. In the wild, we have species that are separated by geographical and ecological factors. That's what maintains these species as species, even if they're closely related and live next to each other. So the Burmese python, its closest relative is the Indian python. Some people call it the Indian rock python, it doesn't really matter. But there are areas in northerly parts of their range where they coexist and where they do encounter each other, but we don't see interbreeding on a regular basis. The reason for this is that Burmese pythons like it very swampy, Indian pythons like slightly different habitat, they like it drier, there might be slight differences in timing to their breeding as well. And ecologically, those species remain separated out. In an invasive environment, I guess some of those factors are overcome by different population pressures, the fact that there's not potentially as many mates of the same species. That's what we see with wolves and coyotes in North America. Uh, and that can push hybridization. What everyone overlooks in Florida though, is that we're talking about a handful of African rock pythons versus possibly a few hundred thousand Burmese pythons. So even if they do hybridize, genetically this is going to be a drop in a huge gene pool and they're not going to spread throughout the whole population just like that and create a super snake. Mathematically speaking, biologically, it's just not going to happen. He was right here and he was big. He had to have been four foot at least, head to tail. Check this out. A Nile monitor lizard is creeping around homes in Cape Coral. This one was spotted near Southeast 14th Terrace this week. These lizards are big. The biggest one gets up to about six and a half feet long. If you put it vertically, that's taller than I am. Most measure about five feet long, still pretty big. The lizards are native to Africa. NBC2's Gina Tomlinson is in Cape Coral tonight showing us what you should do if you see one. Jill Alverd isn't the only neighbor who's seen one of these massive lizards near this canal. She says when it comes to its size, this photo she snapped doesn't even do it justice. For once the news was being quite conservative there, I've heard that they can get to eight foot plus. I'm not sure if that's really true. It's just what people have told me. But anyway, apparently there are at least three established populations of breeding Nile monitors in Florida. When I started thinking about this, I kind of started to wonder why they haven't spread more uh, and why they aren't just, you know, taking over the state because they're such a tough, adaptable predator. They will eat anything they can. And the only thing I can possibly think of is that they really like riverbanks and canals and habitat like that in the wild, even though canals, you know, it's not really habitat. Um, but that's the kind of place they like. Maybe they're less likely to cross large areas of open ground. Maybe they don't like urban areas. 
One Central Florida neighborhood can call off their cobra watch. The large snake was found a month after it first disappeared, and where it was found can only be described as a surprise for one homeowner. CBS 4's Lauren Pastrana tells us how the discovery was made. Because I could tell that it wasn't in the dryer, and it was behind the dryer or under the dryer. You might expect to find a stray sock near the dryer, but Cynthia Mulvane found a snake, an eight-foot king cobra to be exact. And I don't freak out with snakes. I started getting a little antsy there about the fourth hiss, but I just completed my task and went inside and made a phone call. Got to love the attitude. You see men my age jumping around, grabbing snakes, wrestling them out of breath and throwing the arms around, doing all the, you know, the whole bit that we see on TV. Granny there just saw a King Cobra and made a phone call, got it sorted. So, you know, hats off to her, really. On another note, with the King Cobra, what does worry me with that species is that they are ophiophagous, or they like to eat snakes. They're really specialised. And another snake that is specialised and kind of occupies a similar niche in the wild is the indigo snake, which is endangered in Florida. So if there were King Cobras, and there's long been rumoured to be a population, of, I don't really believe it, but it's a long-standing rumour, if they did go wild, I, I wonder if they could actually harm the chances of survival of the indigo snake. Look what I found. This is what I came across last night. Obviously not a python. This is a boa. And this is a very, very sweet boa. So I think that she was a pet, or she's at least used to being around people. Well, that made her day. I can imagine some people probably wouldn't be quite as pleased. Boas, I've, I've said like the newest invasives in this video, but boas have been around in Florida for quite some time, but they haven't spread very far. Seemed like a pretty rough way to catch the boa there. I'm pretty sure I could have done that more gently with a little bit less fuss, but still, that's a fire service. They're not supposed to be out catching invasive reptiles. They're supposed to be rescuing you from burning buildings. Hey guys, I'm in the Florida Everglades and I just found a common boa. This is super rare to find an adult like this here in Florida. Looks like she just had some babies. Yoink. You're gonna be my new pet. If anyone's gonna find a boa, it's gonna be Fish and Garrett. I really suspect he knows the best spots in Florida. He knows his area well. Common boas have become established in parts of Florida, but again, they haven't spread that well. They're not taking over. And really, the only reason I could think of for this case is that they do like it a bit drier. Initially, again, this is one where I heard about it and I thought, well, they could spread everywhere. I mean, they're so adaptable. They're so wide ranging in South and Central America and even parts of Mexico that I just thought they could do really well. But I didn't take into account that, yeah, they do like it drier in quite a lot of their range. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. If you enjoyed this, please do like, subscribe and come back next week. Overall, some of these are established and some of them are new and some of them are doing well. But also, some of them, I just don't believe it. It just doesn't make sense. As a biologist, I can't see them spreading, and some of them, I really can't believe they're even there. So please do let me know what you think. Thank you very much.